All right, guys, I wanted to give a quick uh, few lecture notes on power and intensity. Okay, so we know that a wave transfers energy. Right, a sound wave causes vibrations in our ear. Um, the sun from the heat, or the heat from the sun heats up the earth. And so these waves transfer energy from their source to uh, whatever they're incident on, okay? And the question is, how much energy is transferred? And in order to talk about how much energy is transferred, we really need to talk about the power, right? Because the wave starts at one time and ends at another time. And we need the power. The power is the rate of energy transfer. It has units of joules per second. And as a reminder, one joule per second is equal to one watt. So the power of a wave is given in watts. And we run into this with speakers and speaker systems, which are rated in watts. We run into this with light bulbs, which are rated in watts. And so if we want to talk about how much energy is transferred from the source to whatever the wave is incident on, we need to talk about the power and how much time is involved in that power being um, you know, transferred through the wave. And power is one measure of how much energy is transferred by a wave, but we're interested in where that energy is transferred and what destination that it's incident on. And so uh, to explain this point, let, let's give a quick example. Let's say we have a, a light bulb and it puts out five watts of power. And that incandescent light bulb is going to emit that power, five joules per second, in all directions. And you know, this might light up a light room or light up a room with this light bulb. But qualitatively, we can see that the situation would be different if we take that same light bulb and with a series of mirrors and lenses, we take that light which was emitted in all directions and we concentrate it to one point, okay? One bright point. This is like what happens in a projector, right? We get it up with one bright screen from this light bulb. The light is not going in all directions. So here, this spot is much brighter than the same power from the same light bulb being emitted in all directions. So these ideas of brightness and loudness, what we perceive as a strong energy transfer, have to do not only with <clears throat> the power of the source, but the area that receives that energy. Or power, okay? So we would need to define a new physical quantity and that's called the intensity, which is equal to the power divided by the area that receives that power. It's a power to area ratio. The units of intensity are watts per square meter, power divided by area. And so for an example, um, let's consider a one milliwatt laser with a one millimeter diameter beam. What is the intensity? Okay, well the intensity is going to be the power divided by the area 
that receives that power. So in this case, we're going to have 1 times 10 to the minus 3 watts on the top. And on the bottom, we're going to have the area of a 1 millimeter diameter circle. So this is going to be pi times 0 0.5 millimeters squared, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 3 watts divided by pi times 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. We always got to convert to SI units squared. And this gives us a total power, or excuse me, a total intensity, the power is one milliwatt, a total intensity of 1300 watts per meter squared. Okay, let's do another quick example. What is the intensity of sunlight on Earth. All right, so here we have the sun. And over here, we have the Earth. Okay, And the sun emits light in all directions, in three dimensions, right? So these are actually spheres that I am drawing here. Okay, and by the time it gets to the Earth, uh, we are <clears throat> way over here, and so the sunlight has been spread out all, o all over the surface area of the sphere, where the radius of the sphere is the distance from the Earth to the sun. And this distance is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. Okay. We also need to know the power of the sun for this example, and I'm just going to give that to you. It's 4 times 10 to the 26 watts. Big number, big number. So the intensity is going to be equal to the power divided by the area in which that power is distributed. So when we're close to the sun, right, all of those rays or all of that energy that's radiated out from the sun is emitted in all directions around this small sphere. But as we get further and further out, that sphere that has to contain uh, you know, all of that power gets thinner and thinner, I mean, bigger and bigger and bigger. So the power, or excuse me, the intensity is reduced the further and further and further you get from the sun because it's going in all of these directions over this huge, huge area, okay? So this is going to be equal to the power of the sun, which is four times 10 to the 26 watts, divided by the area that it is spread out over. And in this case, we're gonna use the area of a sphere, which is four pi r squared, in our case, 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters all squared, okay? Putting this into our calculator, we get an intensity here on Earth of 1,400 watts per square meter. And as a last example, I'm going to ask, uh, how much more intense is the light on Mercury than on Earth? All right, well, the intensity on the Earth is going to be equal to the power of the sun divided by four pi radius of the sun to the Earth squared. And the intensity on Mercury is going to be equal to the power of the sun divided by four pi radius of the sun to Mercury squared. And the intensity on Mercury divided by the intensity on the Earth, I asked how many more times intense is it on Mercury than it is on Earth, is equal to the power of the Sun divided by 4 pi times the distance from the Earth to the Sun squared. And that gets divided by, excuse me, this is Mercury up top, the distance from the Sun to Mercury squared. And on the bottom, we get the power of the Sun divided by 4 pi times the distance from the Sun to the Earth squared. Once again, this is the surface area of the sphere in which that power is spread out. We'll see that the power of the sun cancels, the four pi's cancel, and we end up with the intensity on Mercury divided by the intensity on the Earth is equal to the radius on Earth squared divided by the radius on, 
the radius to mercury squared, which ends up being uh, 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters squared, that's the distance from the sun to the earth, divided by six times 10 to the 10 meters, which is the distance from the sun to mercury, all squared. And so we get that the ratio of these intensities, the intensity on mercury divided by the intensity on earth is equal to about 6.25, six times, six times more intense, six times brighter. So a couple of things. First of all, in this final calculation, we did not need to know the power of the sun. So we can make a comparison between two intensities without knowing the power of the source because it's just about the geometry of how that light or that power is spread out. And in this case, we have two spheres of two different radii, Rm and Re. And so this uh, recovers a general relationship that we can use to compare intensities in general without knowing the power of the source. The intensity of one divided by the intensity of two is equal to the radius of two squared divided by the radius of one squared. And one last note about this talk of power and energy. Um, oftentimes, right, in simple harmonic motion, we're given the amplitude, or in a wave, we're given the amplitude of the displacement. And it's good to remember that in simple harmonic motion, the energy is equal to 1 half k times the amplitude squared. So the energy goes like the amplitude squared, which means the power goes like the amplitude squared, which means the intensity goes like the amplitude squared. And so in general, we can keep this in mind that the intensity of a wave is not proportional to its amplitude, but is in fact uh, proportional to its amplitude squared. Just a useful fact to keep in mind. It's easy to think that the intensity is proportional to the amplitude, but in fact, is proportional to the amplitude squared.